Georgia and I like to read. Give a book, give a voice is a channel that helps young people learn new vocabulary and listen to interesting stories. The book I'm reading today is Funny Kid for President by Matt Stanton, Chapter 4. 4. Sometimes the toilet is the best place for a cuddle. It takes the whole walk from the bus to the classroom to come up with something. Neither Hugo or I like to like having to negotiate with the enemy, but when they blackmail you, there's not much choice. We think of things we can give Abby to buy her silence. My squish sandwich from yesterday. It's in my bag under the worms. Hugo's math homework. Useless anyway. My little sister, Rosie. But by the time the bell rings, I have come up with something better. Okay, what are you offering? Abby asks outside the classroom door. I take a deep breath. If you don't tell Mr. Armstrong my plan, then Hugo will be a personal slave for the whole week. What? Oops, I forgot to tell Hugo the deal. Don't worry, Hugo. I whisper, trust me. He looks unsure. Abby smiles. That sounds fun. He'll need to carry my bag way outside the girls' toilets for me to do my hair, hold tissues for me when I blow my nose, all that and more, I say. Max, Hugo is tapping my arm. I shrug him off. But unfortunately, I can't take the deal. Why not? Max, 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 Max. Hugo, Hugo keeps nagging. He always does this. Mr. Arm... Uh, Abby smiles again cause I, because I already told Mr. Armstrong your plan. What? Max, he's coming. Storming down the corridor toward toward us like a bull with a bee sting on its butt is Mr. Armstrong himself. His bald head is tomato red again. His little nostrils are flaring and his eyes are bulging out and glaring at me. I turn to Abby in horror. She's doing that lift one eyebrow thing like she's going to enjoy watching whatever happens next. Why would you do that? Hugo asks. She starts to tell us something about truth, justice, and how she wants us she wants to see us get squashed like tiny bugs. But I interrupt her speech so to yell, Run, Hugo! Hugo and I are cuddling each other on the toilet. Well, I'm, well, really, I'm cuddling him. He's more just crying in fear. Hugo cries all the time. He once cried when realized that chocolate milk did not actually come from brown cows. And the, and that meant his quest for the mysterious pink cow of strawberry milk fame was a lost cause. As far as for why we're on the toilet, we're hiding from Mr. Armstrong, of course. Slowly, we hear the bathroom door creak open. Two heavy footsteps land on the tile. Hugo looks up at me as if to ask, when we die, can we keep hanging out in heaven? I know you're in here, Max, the teacher's voice booms. I look back at Hugo. He's so trusting. I have a hostage, I call out. Hugo's eyes go wide. Don't worry, I whisper. He's after me. Hugo starts crying again. I can hear Mr. Armstrong facing outside the toilet cubicle. Will he break down the door? Let him go, Max. I'm not quite sure. I'm not sure I've quite thought this through. I try this. I need a helicopter and 20 bucks. Max! Bang, bang, bang. He's pounding on the door now. I can see the metal hinges straining. Is that a crack in the door? Max! Uh-oh. Bang, bang, bang. That door is going to smash suddenly. What's going on in there? Hugo stops crying. Who is that? Oh, uh, hello, Miss Sniggles, says Mr. Armstrong. Miss Sniggles is the school principal. She's here to save us. Why are you scaring the children again, Mr. Armstrong? Miss Sniggles, these these children are going to end up in prison if I don't. Nonsense, Mr. Aunt Armstrong, says the principal. All of you, in my office in two minutes. We are going to discuss this in a civilized fashion, over a cup of tea. The end.